In this video, I want to tackle the very beginnings of automation. A lot of students are first introduced to automation in a pneumatics class. It's a really good place to introduce it. Some of my other videos, I show just the real basics of you push a button, the cylinder comes out, you push another button, it comes out. And some of the videos in this playlist, and I'll link a couple below in the descriptions, we walk through that and the logic of understanding it. But I'd like to take it a step farther in this and really discuss how you can, what you learn in as far as the beginning steps of automation in pneumatic controls relates over to electrical controls. And I want to talk about this using a couple of different directional control valves. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, I have a very basic system. I push the pneumatic push button, it extends out, hits a pneumatic limit switch, and automatically retracts. Notice I used the word automatically retracts, so I don't have to have another hand there retracting the cylinder. So I activate this, it extends, automatically retracts. This is nothing more than another push button that would be down there. But instead of having another thumb there to activate it, it automatically comes back. Now, this is a 5-2 double pneumatic controlled cell in, uh, directional control valve, okay, right here. When you start to relate this over to electrical circuits, things become a little murky and there's some steps that you have to really understand to, to figure out what way is better. So if you look down here, you will see that I have a very basic, almost exact replica of the pneumatic controls up here just done with electrical okay and here I switched it up and instead of having a double solenoid controlled 5-2 directional control valve I have a single solenoid spring return 5-2 directional control valve so let's take a look at the difference in why you might want to use one or over the other okay so there are some sizing issues here that come into play. So if any engineers are looking at this or people with a lot of experience want to kind of come at me a little bit saying, well, you would do this and you would do that. That may be true. And especially if it's a really big directional control valve, there's some other options that are available to you. But we're just talking about a very basic pneumatic low current solenoid control valve. So let's talk about it. So here is my uh, control circuit here. Here is my pneumatic power circuit. Now notice that I put a proc sensor here. This would actually be considered a reed switch that runs off the magnetic band across the piston here. So when this comes out, it will activate this prox one, which is shown in the control circuit by this diagram here. Now proc sensors tend to have a couple of different schematic diagrams. This is just the one that Automation Studio uses Okay, uh, and so we're going to stick with what they have for simplicity purposes. So here I'm going to push the button, which is the same thing as activating the push button here. It extends out and it automatically retracts. Now you notice when it activates this, there's a magnet around here, and this activates the proximity sensor or what is typically referred to as a read switch in this situation. So I activate it, it comes out, this closes, activate solenoid three and pushes it over. The great thing about having a double solenoid control is that it simplifies the electrical circuit a lot, all right? Because once it's moved into a position, there's no spring that it has to fight to to maintain its position. So it can be much simpler. This is why you're likely to see a double solenoid control valve like this if it's not being controlled by a PLC because it's it's a little bit simpler the logic and especially if it's something as simple as this where there's no timing controls or anything like that it, it, it's very likely to see something as simple as just this okay now let's look at it if we have a single solenoid control spring return 5-2 then it gets much much different okay and this is where going back and watching some of my logic videos that I've done previous to this would kind of help out because I'm going to use some terminology that if this is my your first exposure to, to uh, this type of circuit it may confuse you just a little bit okay so um, anyway let's go ahead and walk through it so the trick with the with a single solenoid directional control valve is that you have to lock this in 
while it's extending because if you don't it will as soon as you release it it will retract and i talk about that in a previous video so let's take a look at the logic here so i have what's called a control relay that's going to do two things one it's going to lock memory in okay so i don't i can i only have to temporarily push this start button and it's going to activate this rung two to activate my solenoid all right so the logic here is the start button or memory, not this stop button, not this prox2, which I have laid out here. Now you'll notice something. The prox over here is normally open. The prox here is normally closed because we're treating it like a not circuit. So this will be true as long as the prox is not activated. So when I activate this, it will behave exactly the same way as the other two. So I push it it comes out and automatically retracts. You'll notice memory locks in for a moment. Let me slow it down here a little bit. Okay, memory locks in. Then that prox opens up when it activates this read switch. Okay, and I'm just holding it down so it's bouncing back and forth so you can see it. All right. Now, the question would be is, well, why would you pick one over the other? Electrically, if I'm looking at this, this is much different. This is a much more complex circuit, and that's true. It also has a, a larger cost associated with it because you have a, to purchase a control relay to make it happen. And your proc sensor, and most of them are, have to have the ability to be normally closed. Most of them have the ability to be normally open or normally closed, okay? So the reason I'm demonstrating this to you is if you were to program this on an industrial computer, most commonly known as a PLC, this would be much easier because, because this control relay would be done internally. You wouldn't have to have an external device there, okay? And in some of my other videos, when I talk about programming PLCs, I actually have examples that are pretty similar to this. So um, the advantage here is, is that if you're using a PLC, wiring up one solenoid is much easier. It's just much easier to do compared to if you're not using a PLC, this system would be much easier to wire it up. So you kind of have to strike a balance there on basically how you're going to control it. Are you going to use an industrial computer or is this just going to be hardwired like a motor control circuit? Okay, or what could be called an industrial wiring control circuit. So anyway, I hope this video helped introduce you to the beginnings of automation and how they can be taken from a very basic pneumatic system and applied into a couple of different types of pneumatic circuits that are controlled electrically, not pneumatically. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button.